are relighting Mount Rushmore National Memorial this evening with a brand new lighting system, LED lights. I've been involved with the National Parks since 2001 when I went on the National Park Foundation board and I've always appreciated and enjoyed national parks, but I came to understand it in a great deal more depth and so began to look at ways that we could help make a difference. The first lighting project we did was going to a meeting in Washington, D.C. Half our meetings were in parks, half of them were in D.C. It's going to one in D.C. and going by the Washington Monument. And it was really not well lit at all. And so I mentioned to the director that we would be willing to donate a lighting system for that. Laura Bush was on the Park Foundation at that time as First Lady. And the first meeting I went to after that, she said, if you can do that with the Washington Monument, how about coming over and take a look at the White House? And so we went over and got involved in doing that. And by the time we got through those and working with Park Service people, uh, began to realize there would be a lot of opportunity to work with the Park Service to develop good lighting practice standards that the general public could understand. And so we've been continuing to pursue that. And I believe this opportunity out here with Mount Rushmore uh, is going to be one of those opportunities to even more clearly demonstrate that. Well, whenever we uh, take light into a, a beautiful environment like the Black Hills, uh, we need to be concerned about what impact it would have maybe outside the park. Um, on the natural environment and on people's ability to see the night sky. The lights that uh, we're seeing here tonight are very precisely aimed. So uh, just the heads are lit up and not the sky beyond. Um, and those factors are what's really gonna keep the light out of the night sky um, so people can see the stars, not only in the amphitheater below during the evening programs, but also out here in the Black Hills. We have an evening program throughout the summer here at Mount Rushmore. We usually start about Memorial Day weekend and we run through the end of September. And traditionally, the last thing, the last part of our evening program is lighting the sculpture. And everybody's look excited for that and they're looking forward to it and their cameras are ready. Well now, it doesn't necessarily have to be the last thing. Now we've got the ability that during our program, while we're talking, we could just light up Washington, or if we wanted to compare Washington and Lincoln's administrations, we could light those two presidents and leave the other two dark. It is opening a myriad of possibilities for us. The benefits from the lighting that we've been able to develop here for Mount Rushmore holds a lot of promise for the entire national park system. The type of effects that you can get without compromising visitor or public safety in terms of using lighting design and lighting technology to create a certain effect absolutely will help us improve lighting for environmental impact, visitor experience, cultural resource protection, a whole host of objectives that are important for the national park system. With expertise like we're getting here tonight from MUSCO with the National Park Service, this has wide applications uh, in national parks uh, as well as in your home. And the National Park Service hopes to be a leader um, in demonstrating the kind of lighting that can take us into the 21st century in a sustainable way. The idea is not using more light, uh, the idea is how to use it better, more sustainably. And in the end, we're gonna save a lot of money doing so. From a technical standpoint, one of the biggest challenges of your lights are basically a fifth of a mile away from the sculpture. They're, they're about 1,100 feet away, and so trying to control light uh, and get it onto the faces without throwing light, again, throwing light into the night sky or, or, or minimizing the light on the, the talus leading up to the sculpture has created a, a pretty substantial challenge for us. So basically there's 20 LEDs per fixture. Each fixture is operating at about 60 watts. They were uh, custom designed for the Mount Rushmore project. And uh, we also worked with the National Park Service and some of their partners to uh, attain a, a 3D model of the, of the sculpture itself that we were then able to import into our lighting design software. So we can actually simulate what the, what the sculpture is gonna look like before we ever bring any fixtures out and do some uh, 3D models, light, lighting models that are, that are gonna predict uh, you know, shadowing or dark spots, as well as uh, 
shadowing from a positive standpoint that help you define features, uh, again, what we refer to in, as modeling in the lighting industry. There's a lot of pride in it. It's, um, you know, you always, you always have expectations for things like this. And uh, when you get a chance to come out and see it, uh, I'm just amazed at what, what our team does, what the guys are able to achieve. I think what we've done here tonight is demonstrated that good lighting practices can make something more enjoyable and still do it in an even more responsible way.